I'm um, about to import a kick drum to start with. How do you choose your kicks? Um, basically by the sound of it. I just don't want I don't want them to be um, too woody. I just want them to sound more like you know deep bass and clubby basically. Um, I where, show you. Where did you get them from? You sample them up or? No, it's it's kind of like we have we have kind of kick drums that we've been working on for years and years, and you kind of develop the kick drums you have and, and and just work on the sound around it, and and then some sometimes you sample, you know, it's kind of belong, you know, which it should be like that. Samples good. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, there we go. I'll take a kick drum I've already. So this is a kick from a previous loop? Yeah. yeah, it's just like we do tracks and I just save like like parts of tracks in the computer that we already used and and drums that even even drum loops that we've done, I'll I'll save them down to the hard drive so we can re uh, reuse them. Okay, next step, baseline. Pick a synthesizer. I'll probably use. It depends on it depends on what kind of track you want to do. If you want to do something more full on, I, I usually use the Rob uh, Pip and the Predator or or something like the Massive or something like that. But um, today I'm gonna try the Jupiter Eight. See how that goes. So relatively new plugin, just got this. Um, we got this. We, we moved into this studio like four four months ago, and then we changed the whole system. So we got new computers and new synthesizers, <laughs> even if if we had some from before. But we just wanted to change, and it's nice to uh, to feel fresh when you move in somewhere. Bass lines that are going in stereo and chorus, so I always um, remove all the effects so I can keep the kick and the and the and the bass in the middle instead of having it flying around everywhere. A bit of a deeper track today. That's what I feel like doing. So let's see. That's the bass line. I always uh, quantize it with 16C if you want to get the kind of more jacking. In that's this case, of, that's a logic, is it? huh? Is that a quantized preset in logic? Uh, yeah, they have like 16A, 16B, 16C, 16D, and, and onwards, and they have eight and nine triplet and five triplet and that. So I just use. Um, sometimes I go in and edit it myself, and this time I wasn't that happy with the quantize, so I'm gonna redo it. We'll try a 16B instead, which doesn't work. We'll try. Um, what kind of feel are you aiming for? Huh? <coughs> what are you aiming for with the baseline feel? Kind of like round and 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 just and just um, just get the bass 
wobbling around and then just build stuff around it instead of I, I just I always my, 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 my first thing is to work around the baseline that's the most important baseline and kick drum for me you know I could hear a track that is only a baseline and kick drum and I don't even have I don't even need more elements it's just just getting a groove right yeah sometimes it doesn't want to cooperate you know Playing around with the cut, with the cut off and just feeling if it's a good a good sound to use because I will open it up eventually and um, just want to feel that I'm not um, using us yeah you know just to just to get it going. I did a mistake there, so I have to correct it. For some reason, it doesn't want to cooperate today. Dun, 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 dun. The. So you know exactly what you want here, because that that sounded fine to me. So for what? No, I want. Um, I'll show you. I usually like to work more with audio since um, I can see what's going on. Yeah. You know, now when I, work, when I work in MIDI, I can only see small blocks, and that annoys me. Because um, I can't see a s some spectrum, I can't see the, 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 the whole thing, it's just a block, and you know, it's, it's, sometimes it's annoying. So I usually uh, get my bass lines in, uh, worked in, in, I bounce them down to audio and then play around with them more. It's easier for me to see what I'm doing. And um, one key thing for me is it's on the master, um, as you can see here. Um, I always have my own my, my special setup, and that's uh, compressor, equalizer, compression, and uh, PSP vintage warmer, just to just to get the master sound right. And then I'll basically instead of mastering the track, I'll do it wh while I'm working. So when I'm done with the track, it's gonna sound good instead of having to t have another go on it. Okay, there we have a bass line. And then we're gonna make a, a kick, I, I always copy a kick down to second channel. <coughs> so we do, um, I take off the output. When I then go to the bass again and put the compression on, I'll pick the side chain. So I picked track two. Since it doesn't have any output, the kick is still gonna be there and pump on the compression, but it's not gonna you're not gonna be able to hear it. And what are your settings for the side chain compression? Just uh, you know, I, I just basically just no attack, you know, and, and keep the release in the middle and, and then just play around with the threshold depending on what kind of bass line it is. Some bass lines are longer, some bass lines are shorter. As you can hear it's 
everybody click, you know. Okay, so we have a baseline to work around. And then um, let's put some hi-hats. So what I do is I usually use the, um, the ESP, the synthesizer, um, and only use the noise. As you can hear. There we go. 16C. I usually prefer to work like this instead of instead of um, You got a cooler sound. It's not a. Okay. It's not a. Uh, low cut. Yeah, I put a low cut on just to cut the the the, the lower frequencies. And then I usually um, put a compression on there as well and use the side chain to get the, to get the, the beats bouncing. a bit just to see um, where we're gonna go from here because as I told you before my key element is the is the bass and the kick so I always have I want to have a working kick and bass drum um, bass let's see It's a little bit boring the bass line, so I'm thinking of redoing it. So I'm going to play around with a couple of different sounds, just to... Um... So it's the sound, not the, the notes? You're happy with the notes? Or? No, the notes, you know, sometimes I can be a bit... If I hear, if I leave it walk, going around for a while and I get bored of it, you know, it's no, it's no point in, in, in using it, so... Let's play around and see what happens. It's a more open sound and more big, so... So what I did there was I played with the release of the of the of the sound, just to get it um, traveling more. 
instead of using the short one. Okay, so let's, um, next element, strings. For strings, we have a synthesizer called uh, Philharmonic, which I think is the best one for strings. It sounds, uh, it sounds live, and uh, that's important. The strings is something you always go for then? No, it's just like when you want to get the harmonies right. I'd rather do strings than, than using an 80s synthesizer and just getting 80s vibe on it. I usually uh, pick strings. Yeah, it's it's strings. It's it's a nice it's a nice tool. Um, let's see here. Mm, we're gonna use. Sound, it sounds it sounds really good with these strings. So, so what setting is that? <coughs> strings? Have you got a, a one you use? Um, I just pick like cello or something, you know. Yeah. Just keep it simple. <laughs> So the strings I pick now, they're gonna, they end. So I'm gonna need to find uh, loop strings, so I can get uh, longer strings. Because the ones I'm having you now are, they just stop playing after a while. Do you want to hold a lot? Hold it yeah, I want to have something. Let's see. <laughs> are better but they don't play they don't play the, the high notes so Do a movie instead if you want. <laughs> <laughs> What I'm gonna do now is I'll probably I'm gonna play around with the with the 
with the strings. Yeah, yeah, and then I'll, I'll I'll play around it. I know the no notes, but it's just like wasting time to to play around with it. I might as well just copy it. I say paint what you're doing but uh, it's kind of boring but um, we'll try and see how it goes putting a low cut on the strings so it doesn't interfere with the bass and then um, we're gonna try and work out some beats so I'll use ESX24 <coughs> sorry about that 808 kit There's a hidden... Yeah, we go. Shaker. Always reach the 808 kit then? Is that favorite? Yeah, I mean, it sounds really good. And um, it's just one of the best drum kits I've ever heard, I think. You can play around with it so much and it fits in the in every track you do, because it doesn't take too much space. So you can leave more space for the bass line and, and the kick drum and the strings instead of using drums that just mess up the sound.
now I'm gonna play around with the 808 again. I'm gonna play around with the tombs because I think they're fantastic for. Can we have a listen to just the 808 on its own? Yeah, yeah. I created this. And then you can quantize it as you want. So it's straight. But I kind of like it C. I'm gonna change. Um, this is the typical course of progress, you know. It's once you, when you once you work, you just wanna change the entire track sometimes. So um, I'm thinking of going in a different direction. In what sense? What one are you liking? What are you it's kind of like yeah, I like when it's stripped down, you know, and and and, and kind of basic instead of uh, having. Yeah, no, it's not getting full, but it's just the kind of mood you're at. You know, you're, you're, I'm in a special mood today, and I'm just going to create something that fits my mood. Um, I think it's easier than trying to work and just and sit around, and you work and work, and you're going to be like, OK, I'm going to do a hit record, I'm going to do a hit record, I'm going to do a hit record. You know, it's never going to happen. You know, it's, you know, the more you say it, the longer distance you get from pulling it off. You know? I like the basic bass sound in in the in ESX24, just the original, just the you know, the original synth. Yeah, I kind of I love it. It's so deep, you know. for a while, see what happens. And you know, sometimes you go back to the ones, the, the track you started, sometimes you just keep on working on the new things. You know, it happens all the time, you just, it's, I call it schizophrenia, but uh, you can call it whatever. Right. Back to minimal. I just put a straight bass. Um, that I quantized with um, with 16C just to make it more chopped up. And then um, I put the side chain on. You can still um, play around with the strings. <laughs> Keep it, uh, keep it rolling. So what 
about the drift right now? You're not happy with that, are you? The old bass? Yeah. I don't want that. <laughs> That's deleted. The string sounds a little bit cheesy, so I'll... Uh, I'll remake them. something to feel uh, sad but not you know not depressing perfect I'll just cut them to make them all the same length Put a reverb on the strings. I'll use. Uh, Easy yeah, because I think it feels good for the kind of um, the kind of thing you're doing. And and. So you're, going for, you're going for ultra realism on the strings, then, really. Real reverb uh, sound. Yeah, strings. just trying to get it, you know, big. I'm happy with the strings. I think they sound beautiful. Not too much, you know, not too simple. Well, are you using a preset, preset? No, I'll just pick one and, and just scroll around and see which one that fits best. Okay. Um, this one is a bit big, you know. Um, which one's that? What's it called? It's called non-linear. Okay. So I'll probably use A drum reverb. It sounds odd, but... The drum reverb is short. But it's still thick, so...
put a spreader on the strings just to make them wider and that's for the same reason as I want to keep the bass and the kick drum in the center and uh, I think it's really important. <laughs> So what I'm doing now is um, I'm just scrolling around to see if I can find some some sound that's gonna fit into the whole into the whole track. I'm gonna look for a, a bleepier sound just to just to top top the top the track with stereo delay. Not, not so much melody, just kind of a, a Maybe a melody, you know, just to. Uh, that's a stereo delay. Uh, this is a basic setting, but I'll um, I like to play around with it on my own. I wish I could sing, because I would probably go in and sing on it, but <laughs> uh, since I'm a lousy singer, I won't even open my mouth. So if you could put vocals on it, what, what are you thinking? Like, if you could have... um, some long stretched uh, female, light, light female vocals probably, just to... Like soulful, yeah, there's a problem when you're working with, with when I, I, I put, pick this path now, when I, I work a bit deeper, it's, it's the kind of problem you can't add on too much stings because you kind of want to keep it simple and slow and, and just, just keep the vibe there. <laughs> this is a track called Tricky that I'm, uh, I'm working on. Um, I have to finish this by, um, by tonight. So uh, yeah, you have to, um, you're gonna see when I'm doing the build-ups and, and rearrange the track to get it um, maximized. So uh, yeah, I'll get starting. So first we'll work on the intro, just to see... Um the basic it's like after 30 seconds um, I'll bring in the kick drum and and just keep the build-up going and a standard for me is to keep a build-up the intro for around one minute and then drop into the first break and then uh, yeah have the break around a minute or a minute and a half depending on what kind of track it is <laughs> The drum, snare drum is a bit um, sharp, so I'm gonna cut that. Wait, that's it's a, it's a live, uh, it's a addictive, addictive drums. Okay. 
And for me, it's, I think it's one of the most amazing plugins that I've ever made for software. Since I think it's, um, it sounds so, cl so close to live that it's, it's ridiculous. And, <coughs> and you have all the drums and, and you, can change, you can change banks. And Is this relative? You, you got this recently? I got this uh, two months ago. And, um, what would yeah. you do for drums before then? I will probably sample drums and, and, and go into kind of rock bands and see what they did and you know and, and sometimes we even get a session with a live drummer and just record for like an hour and then we use that to uh, chop to, to chop up and just use use pieces bits and pieces so that's um, it's a bit sharp the snare drum so I'm gonna cut that so what I'm doing is um, I'm gonna put like 12 dB up on the EQ and uh, just search for the the sharp uh, frequency. And uh, when I'm doing that, when you, when you hit the, the, the high frequency, you can, you can, without thinking about it, your ear starts reacting to it. So I think I found it. I just like playing loud, so I wanted to loud, be loud. You know? Instead of it going like that, I would like it to start a bit slower. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a high cut and um, cut the sound a bit. That's just to, Yeah, so I'll go down. cut on the on the base that I use in the break and I don't want to cut it too deep so let's see how this <laughs> off so um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a I'm gonna send the, the, the break bass line to a bus channel and I'll pick bus 5 and then no we took take bus 9 because that's free and on bus 9 I'm gonna put a reverb and um, I, I picked the platinum verb Take the mix down to zero, put the reverb time, time on, on 20 seconds, and uh, just to make it bigger. So in the break, it's going to be fading, and um, we'll see how it goes. Just 
create the biggest possible impact on the on the reverb as possible. And then I put a low cut after that because I don't want the, the bass from the reverb to interfere with the track. And then we put a spreader just to make it wide. And then I'm going to automate um, when I'm sending the track. So that's what I'm going to do now. Let's see. That was, yeah, a reverb that just goes really long, so it just becomes like a white noise. Um. That works. But that yellow curves, the, um the yellow curves uh, that you can see here is the automation of the the reverb, and um, I think it's it, for me it's it's always been a been a tool that I've used through the years because reverbs brings an extra space <coughs> to the whole sound and it makes it really big, and I mean that's what we want, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing I always do is I'll bounce the I'll bounce the reverb on its own to put on. Um, so you're exporting that bus. Yeah. Reverb uh, break, and then I'll add it to the to the audio window just to make sure I can do whatever I want with it instead of using the the actual reverb. There we go. So here's the reverb. Here we have it. So what I'm gonna do now is just to make the, the biggest impact possible, I'm gonna cut the reverb when it kicks in. So when the track kicks in, it's gonna be 100% solo without the reverb. So what I did here was I cut the reverb, I faded in, I put a curve on it so it sounds more like an effects. And that's perfect for reverbs and you know it's it's good to be creative with reverbs because it's it's a good tool. There we go. So I'm happy with that. So let's move along. So do you, if you've got a crash symbol there on the land, what's what's Yeah, the, it's it's the tip for getting the impact on the landing. It's kind of like I just want to use as as less things as possible in the in the break, and then um, just um, when it when it kicks in, it has to be a slap in the face. Basically, that's what I want. Um, it has to be big. It has to be something needs to happen. So I just lose use less things in the break. I don't use drums and stuff. Sometimes I use a drum roll, like in this case, 
but um, I just like re using effects and reverbs and just make this, the, the sound you're using originally makes it make it as big as possible. Then when it kicks in, you have so much other elements, it's it's gonna be um, it's gonna go off. So what I could do now is since I bounce reverb, I don't need to play around with the with the automation. So I can just use the reverb as as uh, effects. So, so before the drop, I'm gonna use it. Standard as well is like um, I keep the, the after after the, the build up I keep it going for about two minutes before I go down to the second break because um, I don't like when tracks are too long uh, it should be two big breakdowns and, and really effective parts when it kicks in instead of just stretching a track all over the place and then after a while it's gonna be boring so, so that's what I'm doing now I need to cut the pieces and. This is the MS20. Okay. MS20. So um Just play around with this. And I don't use uh, I always I don't use the 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 sounds that I use the sounds, but I don't use the settings that they have. I always go in and and tweak on my own just to make sure it, it fits the kind of track and sound I want it to be. Because a lot of people just use presets, and um, I think they should work more on the on the sounds. <laughs> So we're gonna go down to the second breakdown. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna I'm gonna use the same drum fill as I used before it kicked in. I'm gonna use that for a longer. I'm gonna just make it longer. So I'm gonna go down here.
So I picked the wrong base. So I'm going to do like this. Double check the break. thing is MS20 oh. and then and then I just put like I just use different notes and just creating a big can you solo up the, uh, the those sort of snapping hats you know you've got the hats and the like <laughs> so that's addictive again yes okay. addictive is um, the craze you play that channel for it yeah. Because that gives it that beat a real slamming kind of rocky stuff, doesn't it? Definitely. Mm-hmm. 
And then I have a different, different channels that I have the bass coming through. So I always send it to, to bus channels. Okay. Um, this is the original sound. And this is when I've tweaked. What you, what you I just put a, I put a fuss, fuss wah, just to make it a bit more crispy and just cut the, cut the top and the, the, the low. Then I put the low cut on, compression with a side chain, spreader, and then I put a small high cut on it again, just to make sure we don't get the, the dangerous frequencies. Because I don't want to get people bleeding through their ears. <laughs> Okay, so um, let's get this track finished. So you, you have any tips for arrangement? Um, I usually do intro a minute, break half a minute. It's 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 up and going for like a minute and a half, two minutes. Down to break again, minutes break, up again for a minute, and off you go. So in terms of but in terms of uh, do you arrange on the fly or do you usually come up with a loop and then start arranging? No no no, I just arrange while I hear it. Okay. As you feel it since you know I DJ a lot it's kind of like it's easier to hear where I want things to happen and, and where I want things to to do disappear no no I kind of like to keep things simple you know the, the more basic it is I think the stronger it's gonna be I mean in terms um, of for our ears you think do, do you receive a lot of tracks that they've got they're good but they're oh know, yes yeah do you think that's, so that's, that would be a good piece of advice to sort of make sure... Yeah, it's kind of be organized, you know. If you're like all over the place, people is going to be like, okay, what's going on here? Is, are you doing a track or is, is it a circus, you know? And it's kind of like, you need to be focused and organized when you do things.
what I'm gonna do now is I have a couple of um, a couple of pieces here I wanted to cut out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bounce down this track and uh, and then I'm gonna chop it up in audio instead of chopping it up in the arrangement because I've done so many automations and stuff that I don't want to move too much stuff around because it just makes it just you need an aspirin and I don't want that um, I'm quite happy with the track. Okay, so let's... Uh bounce this down and finish this Tri tricky did you bounce straight out you got that master channel to worry again with all the other effects yeah everything all the effects And then, let's see, 265, cool. 